Welcome back everyone to the Thompson Broadcast booth. I'm your host, I'm Kim Kerrigan, and I'm very pleased to have one of our partners with us today, and it's terrific to have you. This is Mark Simpson, and he is the president and CEO of Tribeni Digital. It's nice to see you. Hi, good to be here. Great to have you with us. Nice. Uh, this is an exciting show, huh? Yes, for sure. You know, I've said this to a couple of others who have sat right in the seat that you're in, um, and they have agreed. The golden age of television, here we are, right smack dab in the middle of it. Okay, I accept that phrasing, yeah, <laughs> why not? Uh, as Thompson is you know, launching here in the States and, and you have entered into a partnership with him, tell me why you think it's important. Well, I think that the new technologies coming out will enable broadcasters to do a number of new sorts of services that they have not previously been able to. And of course, that means new revenues. So I think it brings the broadcast industry to a whole new role, actually, in our economy, in our, you know, um, entertainment, yeah. and um, even things that, uh, you know, will power future automobile networks and so on. So there's all kinds of things are coming, and this ATSC 3 standard will fuel all of this innovation. It's built for decades, almost, probably, literally, of future possible extension. So it's a very flexible, powerful, technology platform that uh, as an industry we're putting together and what's exciting about this show is for the first time I think this is the year we'll have stations on the air with a commercial service rather than essentially an experimental you know technology driven service so it's great about it for a while but this oh, sure. is actually yeah we've been working on this a long time absolutely. Um, Triveni has been very involved in the development of the technology in fact my Recently retired uh, chief science officer led the ATSC 3 standards development process. We're still very involved. Mark Coral, I believe you interviewed before, is a ATSC board member and one of the lead technologists out there. So we, we, we are, have been believers in this technology for a long time because we understand the impact it should and will, we believe, have you know, on the broadcasters on their business. So now they're uh, getting to the point of actual deployment, so it's exciting. So let's talk about Thompson and where they come in with you guys. What, what made you decide that this would be a good partnership? Well, what I hear from them sounds like they have the same vision I would have, that this new technology enables a number of kinds of services for products and revenue streams for broadcasters. Um, we focus more on sort of the application layers and technology that enables those new kinds of uh, uses of this broadcast technology. So it's a good partnership in that some of the things we do will help drive their transmission systems. And you know, ATSC3, one of the things they often talk about is single frequency networks. And single frequency networks need all kinds of transmitters. So I, I, I might be in the right booth, right? So I think the, um, the fit of the technology between the two companies is very strong. And um, what do you call it, additive. You know, each Absolutely. one complements the other's Absolutely. business as we get this going. And really, as this new technology comes about, each one needs one another, yes? Yes, for sure, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Talk to us a little bit about what it is your company does specifically, if you will. I realize it's very complex. I was about to say that. As a technology <laughs> provider, sometimes it's hard to phrase it in a way that's understandable, but three main things. First of all, um, we sell typically to broadcasters or cable companies. The kinds of things we do, one is sort of content distribution systems particularly over hybrid networks where in some cases you broadcast content that would be popular everywhere and then have one-on-one -on -one deliveries for content that not everyone would use and they augment each other. That's one category. Another category is, we call it service quality assurance. This is complex technology getting even more so. And if something breaks, you better be able to figure out, actually even, first of all, it is broken, right? You don't want 20 customers to call you as your warning that it's not working. You want your systems to warn you first. So you got to detect that there's an issue, you got to isolate the issue, and you need to resolve the issue. So we have platforms that do that in a number of different ways, very you know, popular out there. The third main category has to do with really metadata, signaling, we do some encoding, so things having to do with the building of the transmissions, you know, that I mean, anywhere you are in the country, you have data pouring all over you all the time. So broadcasters is basically a bit stream with all kinds of complex stuff in there. What we do is build those complex data structures into those transmissions. So, Have you seen in, you've been in the business for a long time. 
um, and we've gone through a lot of transitions. Is this one of the most complex and the most exciting and do you think most, most beneficial for both the broadcaster and the consumer? I mean, I, I know you, I, you had to have been around when we went to HD, you were around for all of those kinds of things. Is this one uh, really challenging? It's more complex technically. It's also got more power. Um, we sort of started right when digital TV was at, in some sense, the phase we are now with ATSC 3. So we named our company Triveni Digital because we didn't do any of the analog TV stuff. And Triveni means kind of convergence in Sanskrit in, in a sense. It's a little more uh, spiritual in Sanskrit than that. Um, the first ATSC 1 rollout had a number of advanced capabilities. It had some shortcomings though that tended to hold them back from commercial success. It basically had to be a business to business sort of thing because the reception was not really quite robust enough. With ATSC 3, the reception is amazingly robust and powerful and flexible. So you can get signals into your home, you know, on little handheld devices. Um, so it's truly a, um, you know, broadcaster to consumer platform. And because of that, a lot of the ideas of how you add, you know, data-driven services, applications, interactivity, um, you know, targeting of content, all of these things are going to come to the fore and will drive revenues and value to the consumer. Absolutely. Do you think the consumer has any idea what's coming their way? Um, well, maybe a couple early adopters somewhere, yeah. <laughs> five or six of them. You know. right. And there might be some in Phoenix where we've got uh, right. with the Phoenix model market partners and, and so on. But um, not really, you know. I don't think they do. Right. So when will it come their way? Well, I mean, there was an announcement today with a number of you know, leading broadcasters that they're going to put uh, many major markets on the air this year. I think they're putting 30 of the top 40 markets on uh, this year. That's important. Everybody always talks about chicken and egg. You know, frankly, the broadcasters have to go first because the CE vendors will not do devices unless there's going to be signals. So that was a very critical announcement. Um, so we're off to the races, basically. So we'll see you know, TV sets certainly in stores in 2020 for Christmas. Um, I think there'll be other kinds of transition devices, which is interesting, like so a device that can take ATSC3 broadcast over the air signals in and then send that signal throughout the home on the home Wi-Fi network. So your old devices, your smart TVs, your cell phones, your laptops can get content over the air through a translator. So all kinds of interesting new devices will come. To the consumer. You yeah. don't want to feel like something comes on you and you've got to get rid of everything you own. Exactly. And, and you know, if you have to buy a seven thousand dollar TV, right. that's not as no. exciting to very many right. people. Right. I think one of the things that I've found really fascinating about this as I've learned more and more about it too is what this is going to do for the smaller broadcaster. You're talking about the fact that this is going to roll out in 30 of the top 40 markets. Well, we know those are going to be pretty big broadcasters. Yeah. But when you look at this country, out in the middle of the country, there's a lot of small, mom, still mom and pop owned television stations and that kind of thing. And they are going to be able to get involved in this. Oh yes, and actually that is important and sort of a less appreciated story. Like the bigger broadcasters are collaboratively working together and very publicly, visibly doing things. This announcement I'm talking about today is an example. Uh, there are low power broadcasters now who are working with us and of course others who are also very actively involved in ATSC3 and what it can do. Um, and I think in some cases the low power, very small markets will benefit tremendously. Some of those don't have broadband really deployed. But with this technology combined with other technologies, a new consumer services, I believe, will evolve. And, and potentially quite quickly, you know, roll out in the next year to two year time frame. We don't see any press releases about it. We're working on it with customers. So things are happening, it's exciting. So let me roll this right back to Thompson, if you will. Um, it seems to me too, this idea of almost a bundled, outsourced, uh, uh, you know, kind of uh, product is really terrific for those smaller broadcasters as well. They can get the services of someone like you and at the same time be picking up some other services all in one, one stop. Yeah, I mean, there are experts in the industry. We are experts and, you know, it's, it's uh, uh, customers in our booth this morning showing me pictures of some antenna that they had to go to and knock the ice off of. <laughs> so that, I brought that up because it is an example of how broad the chief engineers of the broadcasters have to be. They cover everything right. from, you know, like going and 
literally knocking ice off antennas to how do you hook up cables, all this. No one can do all of this and know exactly how to pick all the different elements for a robust you know, deployment. So we can, and with our partners, we have you know, solutions that are validated, ready to go, we stand behind. Um, I think that's very important. It gives the, the broadcasters confidence that they can buy and evolve with the technology. Um, so, and actually that's something Triveni has done for years. We've been in the broadcast industry for 22 years. Uh, very large market shares. Part of how we got there is whatever it is that we do, we partner with many people in the ecosystem. When somebody like somebody else says, let's say, video compressor, video encoder, we want that company to say, yeah, work with Triveni for that. They're the best ones for that. That's always been our strategy. That's what we're continuing to do. And, it, and frankly, it's more important than ever. This is much more complex, in fact, sure. than the first wave of digital TV was. So it's, uh, yeah, it's a stimulating time. It's the golden age of television. Okay. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I've convinced you, haven't I? I am, I am a believer. <laughs> Mark Simpson, thank you very much, and best of luck. Okay, appreciate it. Thanks.